everyone welcome back if you don't know by now we're building a cubesat satellite we're exploring what is required to design one how quickly we can do it how cheaply we can do it and we have fun along the way so if you have not watched it already there's two previous episodes one about the cost of the cubesat the next we jump into the antenna systems where one of these um, would actually become in handy as well as what base station or ground station equipment we would use today we look at the antenna burn mechanism, or in other words, the mechanism that releases the antenna when actually deployed in space. Stay tuned, there's a couple of live experiments going on. I hope you enjoy. Please bear with me, it's a technical one. And so starting with a Google search, if we just type in antenna, satellite antenna burn circuits, there's quite a few examples of such circuits that exist. Here is we've got one, uh, which you can clearly see as the little rolled up antenna. It's got a gate that closes it with a spring that flings it open and then there you can see the little nylon that crosses four burn resistors in series and that's probably just for redundancy to make sure that at least one of them is successful and the gate successfully deploys. Looking at another example there's a through hole component and the actual thread is wrapped around the burn resistor which would then release once that burn resistor heats up. So there's quite a few examples that you can find online um, and test yourself. Now, the one thing that you might ask is, well, why don't they just use pyrotechnics? Well, for CubeSats, that's not allowed. Um, just as an example, here was one of the, the earlier tests I did, and this is really just a uh, rocket launch igniter in a little metal tube, and the nylon filament is wrapped through the tube to the top. And as you apply a voltage, that releases and flashes through the nylon fairly quickly but unfortunately for cubesats any pyrotechnics is not allowed i wish it was because this is a lot easier than the proposed solution but we have to work with what the limitations and the cubesat specifications allow us to do so i thought i would just include this for everybody to see how quickly and efficiently a pyrotechnic solution or option would have been rather than having to go through the troubles we're going through right now. And so to explain the concept a bit more clearly, um, what we'll do is just do a quick experiment and actually build a, a burn circuit. So what I have here is just a piece of Vera board or a little prototype board. Now, as you can see here is it just has pads and through hole um, slots for through hole components, but none of these pads are actually connected to each other. And all we need is actually just this little bit at the end because we are going to stick it to our little CubeSat and wire it up to see how the circuit works. And so there we have it. It's just a little PC board with some through holes and now we'll look at the, at the circuit. Now, most of you will actually be familiar with these sort of things. These are called through hole resistors and they come in different values. This is a one kilo ohm resistor. Now, what most people don't know about the electronic industry, you also get a SMD or a SMT version of this component, which is called a surface mount component. And these are actually the exact same thing as what you have here. So there is a one kilo ohm resistor. That's a one kilo ohm resistor. But we use these, um, which will explain a bit later and it's just because their thermal rating or how much power they can dissipate actually changes based on the physical size of the component and also the or the design of the device but we are actually looking for a resistor that has a very low limit because we're going to take advantage of that limit shortly just a quick tech tip get yourself a proper pair of snd tweezers as well as soldering iron they are a lot cheaper than a psychiatrist because this stuff will drive you nuts so the first things we want to do is just tint the board and I'm just zooming in this time to show you guys how fine this type of work would actually be. Tint these holes. Tinting just basically means is heating them up and putting some solder on beforehand. Otherwise you struggle to actually solder the component. It's both the holes like that. And so through the research we've done earlier, um, it was determined that the most common value they actually use for a burn circuit is 
anywhere in the 5 to 4.3 ohm resistance and this is just one of those kits that you can buy off Amazon but basically I don't know if you can see this that's all little resistors that's in there so we're going to use one of these as our burn resistor now I'm very sure that when you get to the actual application um, or the professional services that they use something far better suited for the purpose but to illustrate what we're doing this will do just fine and there we go there's one so let's zoom in on this so you can get a better view sorry if the camera is blurry So there's the component. So to explain why the wires actually matters, um, these little resistors, due to this limited size, can only dissipate so much heat. And the way a resistor works is actually by um, dissipating energy through heat and when you generally design an electronic circuit that uses SMD components you have to take that into account because you can't push too much power through a resistor without it actually heating up and sometimes burning out. So what we are actually doing here is deliberately picking a resistor with a low value and we are going to overpower the resistor just to a certain point so it heats up enough to actually cut or burn through the monofilament um, fishing line that would release the actual antenna. And that's why the wire selection has to be very careful because effectively what happens is if the PCB design itself, the traces that leads to that resistor, and in this case the wires is too thick, they actually act as radiators um, and pull heat away from that resistor, helping it dissipate that energy or um, that energy loss so by using this wire as is already actually too thick we'll just give it some extra power to see um, the effect as an example but just bear in mind that's why the actual size of the component as well as the wires plays an important role and so just to make sure we're all on the same page as to how this actually works let's quickly just view a diagram before we do the test so if you have a resistor which is schematically drawn like this. And we said this is like four ohm or something like close to that. And you apply power, this dissipates heat. Okay, well, too much power. Basically, if you look at the PCB from the side, like this, and your resistor is then soldered on top here, Effectively, what they do for a burn circuit is they take the monofilament, which is otherwise known as fishing line, and it just gets very tightly wrapped around the resistor like that. So as this resistor heats up, eventually it heats up enough to break that monofilament, and that's what releases the antenna. And if you recall, the purpose of this video and the whole reason why we're doing this stuff first is to try and get a power budget as to how much power is required to actually do this sort of um, heavy taxing um, operations on a battery power before we can decide how much power or what solar system we require, which is coming up in the next video. So now if this is a bit more clear, um, let's quickly do the experiment and see how this works. Okay, so just to explain the setup. So what we have here is actually a multimeter with a thermal couple just to test the actual temperature that the device reaches as well as power supply set to six volts and is currently current limited so it's just to visually explain what is happening right now so what we're going to do is just take this thermal couple and actually stick it to the resistor we are trying to test obviously you have to be careful because the resistor itself is conductive so can very easily short out the little circuit. So what I'm going to do is just stick on. Yeah, let me show you. I'm just going to stick this to the table, and then stick the thermistor on top. 
making sure it makes contact. It's not the perf most perfect contact, but it should illustrate the point. And you'll see as I'm touching the thermistor, the actual temperature is changing over here. Um, and that's just because of body heat. So we'll hook up the one side. And then what you'll notice on the power supply is as I'm doing this, the current will go up as well as the temperature. So the idea is, if you recall, is for us to find how much energy is required to actually activate the circuit or burn through the monofilament. And what you can see over here is the temperature is actually climbing, and that is the resistor heating up according to the current draw. And so to explain the setup a bit clearer, the little PCB is stuck onto the satellite analog, and the monofilament is stretched across the little burn resistor circuit. So that other side of the monofilament is obviously attached to the antenna ends, and the antenna ends are spring-loaded due to the material that was selected. And so by applying a voltage to the burn resistor, you can see the smoke come out of it, and eventually it gets hot enough to actually release the monofilament, and the antenna deploys successfully in space. So doing this repeatedly, you can start seeing how this resistor or the circuit can become quite a viable solution to deployment in space if you cannot find an alternative method of transmitting your signal that you want to. And this is something we'll discuss in further detail once we get into the actual electronic design of the radio portion of the satellite. But do you have it? So that's a successful demonstration of a antenna deployment circuit. So next what we need to do is just repeat this experiment again, but this time put it on the dual scope or the power analyzer to see how much energy was actually used to complete the task. So the dual scope is wired in line or in series with the burn resistor and, and when you apply a voltage you can start seeing how much current is drawn and right at the bottom you'll see the accumulative joules that is required as the resistor heats up and you can see it's drawing about 260 milliamps at 3.6 volts but if we crank up the voltage slightly to get a faster reaction you should see that climb and then eventually just snap and stop completely and what you can see here is it reaches about 5 volts before it snaps back down to zero which was firmly burned through and so there you have it little satellite requires about 29 joules of energy for it to successfully release its antenna now that's more than i expected but in the next video we'll actually look at the solar panels the storage or the energy storage system and we'll actually do a bit of experiment to see if we can charge up a supercapacitor with enough energy to successfully deploy the solution all by uh, ambient light charging and then we'll take it outside and also charge it outside and see how long that whole entire process takes. So I hope you join me. These type of videos are a bit more technical and they're not made for everybody. So I would appreciate if you consider subscribing, hitting a like or shouting out a comment if you saw anything or if you'd like to ask anything in relating to the subject. Anyway, until next time, thank you for watching.